Welcome to Dark Horse Auto and Diesel. This is the second and final video of the SBI Focus Clutch Replacement Series. In this one I show you how to replace the clutch itself, the throw out bearing, axle shaft seals, and also how to reinstall the transmission back up for the engine. Obviously to replace the clutch you're going to have to remove the trans from the car, and if you missed part one, that's what that video was all about. That video is linked in the description if you need it. That's enough John. let's get back to work. I'll show you how to remove the slave cylinder here. It's real simple. There's three eight millimeter bolts. And then it just wiggles right out of here. And while we're here, inspect around here, see if it looks like it's leaking any. If it does, you may want to replace your input shaft seal. This one is not. I've never done it. I'm not going to do it. So hopefully you don't need to. And now since we're right here, we'll go ahead and put the new slave cylinder on. And if you bought a clutch kit that came with one of these plastic ones like this, just throw it away. These things are f***ing junk. I've had to replace one of these on this exact car before. And the only problem was this piece of crap plastic ended up breaking and you know it was leaking brake fluid out. So just throw it away and get yourself a good one that's made out of metal. It ends up costing more. Uh, this one, it's like a hundred extra bucks for this, but it's well worth the money because this is much less likely to fail than that cheap crap plastic. And one thing I did with this, it's not really necessary, but um, I took some dry lubricant, this stuff here, and just kind of sprayed it along like the sliding points. Like you push down on it, like in that area, I sprayed in there a little bit. Probably not really necessary, but made me feel better about it. Then we'll just take our new one and just get it slid in here. It only goes one way, so you can't screw it up. And if there's a bunch of dirt and stuff in there, definitely clean it out. You try to draw this in evenly. And the proper torque spec for these is, I think, 89 inch-pounds. I don't really know it right off the top of my head. If you want to use a torque wrench on it, otherwise just, you know, kind of snug is fine. Just don't put the Hulk on it. One thing I just noticed with this cheap piece of crap that came with the clutch kit, the uh, spinning part here isn't even centered. I'm sure that's really going to do uh, some good things to the clutch fingers. Junk. Next we'll remove our pressure plate here off the flywheel and this camera angle is about the best you're going to get because it was kind of interesting getting in a decent position to get the camera and my fat ass in here. So there's going to be, what is there, six bolts around the outside of this and they're going to be 10 millimeter. And what I like to do is take out every other bolt and now I'm going to get the remaining ones just broke loose. And then I like to just slowly remove them by hand so we don't drop anything. Not that it really matters because it's getting replaced, but... Now it should stay somewhat attached because of the dowel pins. And usually you can grab a hold of this and pull it off. Sometimes you might need to pry it off a little bit. I'm going to need to pry mine a little bit. And this would be much easier if I was working on the ground, but I decided to sacrifice my own comfort and ease so that you guys could get a better camera angle. Watch, I'm going to get like three views on this video, and I'm doing this for nothing. There we go. And there's our clutch. Doesn't look very good. And if your flywheel's got like a little groove in it, like mine does, you can kind of feel it's kind of uneven. You're going to want to get that turned. So we'll pull the flywheel off next here. And these bolts are 17 millimeter. And if you're smart, you'll leave one bolt threaded in part way. 
so you don't drop this thing. All right, make sure it's loose anyway. Now we can take the bolt out. And this weighs probably about, I don't know, 20 pounds, so be prepared for that. Now that the parts are out of the car, we can take a little better look here. And you can see there's like little kind of burned marks in the flywheel. And running my finger across it this way, there's little ridges. And then right here, there's a ridge too. I believe this is the factory flywheel. It's still got Ford stamping on the back. See it right there. And just the way it looks, it looks like this has had uh, more than one clutch put on it. Or this one was just really screwed. Got some stuff kind of coming off of it there. Doesn't really look that good. Same on this side. You can tell it was starting to come apart. And then here on the pressure plate, same deal. Got some little, looks like it got pretty hot from slipping. And I know it was because uh, the kid was driving it and complaining that you push the gas down and the engine revs up, but it didn't really go anywhere. Like, well, that's because you smoked your clutch. Good job. All right, we're back to the shop here with our freshly turned flywheel. Actually did a really good job on it. But it only costs uh, about 27 bucks after tax, so well worth it. Yeah, you can see what it looked like before versus now. Before we start throwing everything together, to show you the old parts on the left compared to the new, you can definitely tell that that clutch disc was coming apart, especially when you compare it to the new one here. And then the pressure plate, you can see kind of the burn marks on it and it just doesn't look very good. And then our shiny new one. And then obviously this is our uh, installation tool here. That'll be important here in a few. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is get the flywheel installed on the motor. And before we do that, we actually wanna clean this off a little bit, make sure there's no residual oil or grease or anything like that on it. So just get some brake cleaner and a clean rag and just wipe it down real quick don't really want that stuff being stuck on there. Good enough for me. Next, just kind of check your cover here, or your uh, your plate, separator plate, and make sure it's not too bent up. Like this right here, it's bent a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. Once we get the trans slid back in, it'll be fine. But if you want, you can straighten it up. Otherwise, just fine to leave it go, which is what I'm gonna do. Then we'll grab our flywheel. Get that slid onto the crankshaft here. And I'm just gonna grab one bolt for the time being to just hold it in place. Then we'll get some thread locker. Red is usually recommended for flywheel bolts and We'll just put a little bit of thread locker on each bolt and thread it in. You don't need a whole bunch. I've probably got too much on there, but it'll be fine. One thing I forgot about is not all these bolts are uh, exactly even around. So you may have to turn it a little bit in order to get all the bolt holes to line up. Now we'll put our bolts in that have thread locker. Then we'll get all these snugged up by hand, just working them evenly in a cross pattern. Next we'll torque these to 60 foot-pounds in a cross pattern, and we also are going to have to find a way to hold the flywheel in place to keep the motor from spinning. We'll see how that works. I've just got a long pry bar going down to the floor. Yep, that worked real well. I'm sure there's a lot of people that'll just tell you to just grab the old rattle gun and give her a few ugga duggas. If you want to do that, that's fine. That's on you. But I'm showing you the correct way to do it. And then I always like to go back through and check them all one more time. And since you probably got grease on this in the process, it's not a bad idea. Just go ahead and wipe this down one more time. 
probably could have just waited until now to do it to begin with, but if it's really dirty, it's a lot easier to do it on the floor or on the bench rather than in the car here. Next, we'll grab our clutch plate and our alignment tool and pay very close attention. Some of them will be marked gearbox side or transmission side. Other ones will be marked on this side that'll say flywheel side. Don't screw that up. So what we'll do, just take the alignment tool, get it slid through there, and then just stick it into the flywheel there. <clears throat> the alignment tool doesn't want to go in there very easy. Okay, we're back after some slight technical difficulties. I went ahead and put a little bit of the spline grease that came with it on the tool to help it slide in there. You will want a little bit of grease in these splines, but very little, but we'll get to that here in just a minute. So now we'll just take this and stick it into the flywheel like that, and then that'll hold. And then we'll grab our pressure plate. And before you put it on, make sure you clean up this side here. Make sure that there's no grease or oil on it. Some places recommend replacing these bolts every single time. This kit didn't come with new bolts, and I don't feel like it, so we're just going to reuse them. I guarantee you it'll be fine. So we'll just take our pressure plate and get it lined up through there on our dowel pins. And then get at least one bolt started just to hold the thing on there. Now we'll just get all the bolts just kind of start and thread it in for the time being. Now we'll want to move this around a little bit just to try to get it as centered as possible. And then we'll snug these up evenly by hand. And then to start with, when I'm doing a clutch, any clutch on any vehicle, normally I'll just pick three or, you know, half the bolts, whatever, however many they are, and just start snugging those down by hand but make sure you do it evenly. And try to make sure this is as centered as possible because if this is off a little bit, we're gonna have a heck of a time when we go to put the transmission back in. Then we'll just go around and snug the other ones up until they're just pretty much touching. And next we'll go around and tighten them all in a cross pattern to 21 foot-pounds. And one little trick with this when you're torquing these down, try to keep it as uh, perpendicular to the rotation of the engine as possible, and that'll help keep it from rotating around on you. Perfect example right there. And then we'll go back and check all of them one more time just to be sure we got all of them because I'm not even 100% sure I did. Now we can pull the alignment tool out. And the advantage of putting a little bit of grease on this tool is it already kind of helped grease the splines up a little bit for us because we want a very small amount of grease inside of those and also on the input shaft of the transmission but you want very, very little because otherwise it might sling out and get onto your clutch disc and then you ruin your brand new clutch and you did all of this for nothing. Next, I'm gonna show you how to replace the axle seals here. This isn't 100% necessary and if you're not doing it, just hold your horses for a minute because this isn't gonna take up much of your time if you do end up watching through it. The transmission's already out. These seals are cheap. I don't know how much they are normally, but I have a commercial account at O'Reilly's and they were like five bucks each. It's never gonna be easier to change them than now. So you might as well just do it, especially considering the age of these cars. And to remove it is quite simple. I've just got this little seal puller tool thing. And you just kind of hook it in there. Carefully, you don't want to gouge into the aluminum around it. Just get it in there. And then it should just pry out. Or just rip the seal. Simple as that. And then we'll just clean up the seal bore area here. 
yours is really bad like mine, you might need to get in here with uh, like a scuff pad or something. And when you go to buy your seals, be very careful. Make sure you check which ones you have, because apparently, at O'Reilly's at least, there's two different seals that have the same part number, and they're both listed as fitting this car. But the problem is, one of them has got this lip around it. And that ain't going to work, because obviously, uh, you know, I mean, it, it might work, but that's really not where the seal's supposed to go. It's supposed to be set in a little bit, so if you want to try to use that one, go ahead, take your chances, but I'm going to get the one that's more recessed in there. There's like five of them that show up on the screen, and none of them have the lip except for this one, so just double check your parts. Now when you're installing these new seals, you want the, the side with the spring on it here, you want that facing inside, and we'll take a little bit of fresh gear oil, and lube up the hole here Giggity. and then we'll put some around the perimeter of this too and if you don't have a proper seal driver set an inch and a half socket works pretty well you want it to be just smaller than the outside diameter of this seal so that it doesn't get stuck in the bore then you can gently tap it a little bit to get it started You want to try to get it in as square as possible. And hopefully before you pulled the old one out, you paid attention to how far it was recessed in because you want to try to match that as close as possible. It's pretty close, just need to square it up a little bit. And just kind of feel around, make sure it feels pretty even. And now back to clutch stuff. So next what I like to do is take, like, like I said, this stuff came with some grease, the clutch did. And it's, you know, spline lubricant. And that's literally for the splines on the input shaft. So we'll just lightly apply some of that to it. Again, not a whole bunch because you don't want it slinging off and getting on your brand new clutch disc. Then I also like to take and put just a real thin coating on the surface of this. Don't know if it really helps anything or not, but it just seems like a good idea to me. And then be sure to wipe off any excess like I've got right here. I mentioned previously this transmission is not very heavy and I'm just gonna show you that real quick if you haven't figured it out yet on your own. Like I'm not the strongest guy in the world by any means, but that wasn't really difficult to pick up. All right, now I got the transmission slid back under the car Got my riggings all set up, and now we can start the fun task of getting this thing put back up to the engine. And as you're bringing this up and in, just make sure that you don't have any wires or hoses getting pinched in your uh, in between your bell housing and your engine block. What we're trying to accomplish right now is getting the input shaft kind of lined up with the splines on the clutch plate. And once the input shaft is kind of started into the clutch plate, then we can get it shoved that way and kind of rotate it into place. You're going to fight with it for a while, unless you're super lucky, which I never am. So enjoy the sped up version of me struggling. And if you're having some difficulty, just kind of feel around the bell housing and feel how far away the flywheel is from the bell housing. Make sure it's pretty even, because if it's not even, then obviously you're not quite lined up with the, uh, the splines on the clutch. And you may have to get down there and 
spin the flywheel a little bit to try to get the splines lined up. Sometimes that helps. And then eventually, after probably a whole lot of struggling and cussing and maybe even making up a few of your own cuss words, you should feel it slide into the clutch plate and then we can kind of get it rotated back into place and then get two of our bolts started just to kind of hold it in place. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but down here by the cat, that bolt there that remained in the hole, that's a good one to start with. You should be able to get it to catch just enough to get a couple threads turned on it. And it'll kind of hold everything in place. And then we'll get the other bolt that's centered with the dowel over on that side. And then we should be able to use those to gently draw the transmission in. And I'm going to do all that off camera because I'm not going to bother trying to get a good camera angle for it. If you've made it this far, you can probably figure that out. But what I will tell you, as you're drawing those bolts in, do it very carefully. And if you feel it binding or feel some extra resistance, stop and, and look around. Make sure that there's nothing binding up. Like I said, make sure your wires and, and hoses and stuff are out of the way. If it doesn't feel right, your input shaft might not be lined up right. You might have a hose or a wire pinched. Just be careful as you're tightening those two bolts. All right, off camera, I went ahead and got all the bell housing bolts put in and torqued to their proper spec, which will be on your screen. I decided to do that off camera because I was getting really frustrated. One of the bolts, the well, one of the holes, the threads got somehow screwed up in. It was not being cooperative and probably would have been uh, rated R at that point. And with the amount of cuss words flying around then, Samuel L. Jackson probably would have been blushing. English, motherfucker! 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 Mother also, I've got my lift off of here and everything and it's, it's just being supported by the jack right now. So next we'll get this uh, bracket put back on top of the trans. And it's likely that during the process of everything, things have shifted around. So you may need to move the engine around a little bit. I'm not torquing these down to a particular spec other than just tight but I'll put the proper spec on the screen if you want it. Then we'll get this little bracket put back on here. Then we'll get this piece dropped on. And again, we'll probably have to maneuver the motor around a little bit. Get these four nuts here ran down and torque to the torque spec that's on your screen or kind of tight. And now as you can see that stud isn't up in there far enough to get the nut started. So I'm just going to jack up on the engine a little bit. And then just like the others, tighten to pretty tight or whatever number I put on the screen. Next we'll get the hydraulic line for the clutch hooked up and just pull that little plastic piece out and chuck it in the trash. I actually made that. And then remove our clip here. And then just take this and Oh, damn it. 
Remember that bracket that I said not to forget about? I did. Now we can install our hydraulic line. And then just slide that in there. Apparently she doesn't like it dry, so I just took a little bit of brake fluid. I just let it drip off the reservoir cap onto my finger. Now let's see if she slides in. There. Then take our little clip. Next I'm going to take some time off camera here to get the wires hooked up and get all these uh, cables and stuff like that ran to where I think they should be because I honestly don't think they were right when I took it apart but I'm gonna just try to figure out the best way to where things are laying properly or at least close to it to where there's not stuff rubbing on each other too bad not binding up stuff like that so once I get done with that I'll just kind of show you what I got going on so I've got all the wires and stuff hooked up here, and also the shift cables. This was pretty much the best way I could get everything to lay without rubbing too bad on stuff and not break other things to try to get things where they need to be, but I think this is good enough. Yours may look a little different. Like I said, the quality of work done on this car prior is not exactly the greatest. And stuff like this here, the battery cables, I'm going to figure those out once I get the battery tray and stuff like that in here, which is what I'm going to do next. And I'm just going to do that off camera because I don't think I need to show you how to do that. It's pretty self-explanatory. You took it off, you can probably get it back on at this point. Actually, before we put the battery box in, let's bleed the clutch. Or you can do like I just did and put the battery box in and then realize that it kind of sucks to get down there to that with it in and then take it back out. So what we'll do is just go ahead and fill up our brake fluid reservoir which I'm doing right now, you just can't see it. As you can see, I've got a hose hooked up to it. It's actually hooked up to my vacuum bleeder, but that's irrelevant. And then just crack the bleeder open. And then you can do a gravity bleed, where we just sit here and wait. Or if you have a gravity bleeder like I do, you can actually pull the fluid down. Um, I think I'm just going to use gravity, because last time I did this, I actually had some issues with it getting air in the system with the vacuum bleeder. Don't really know how, but maybe that wasn't the problem, but I'm just gonna gravity bleed it for right now. And ideally, due to the layout of this, the best way to bleed this out is to actually force fluid into the bleeder and actually like backflow it through the system just because the bleeder, it's the way it's positioned and everything, it's not actually the highest point on the slave cylinder here. I'm actually gonna try this reverse bleeding method here I've got the hose, quite a bit of fluid on it, hopefully enough to get all the way up to the reservoir. And I'm just going to very, very gently apply some compressed air. I just heard an air bubble come out of the reservoir up there, so that's actually a good sign. I just got to be careful I don't apply so much pressure, I blow the fitting off of the bleeder there, then we'll have a freaking mess. If you look close, you can actually see the fluid level in the hose going down. Probably won't be able to hear it on the camera, but I keep hearing, every now and then I keep hearing little bubbles of air coming up in the reservoir. Stop there before we shove air into the system backwards. Now we'll see if that did anything to the pedal. I keep sitting here pumping it and it's actually starting to get a little bit of feel to it. Might actually have it now. 
I'm used to driving a, either a semi or a, or an F250 with a ZF6 in it, so I'm used to a really heavy clutch pedal. So to me, this feels like nothing, but it feels like there's a little bit of something there. I guess we'll find out when we start the car and go to test drive it. So with that, we'll, I got the little cover back on it now. I'm going to go ahead and put the battery box back on and start reassembling the rest of the stuff. And the rest of this video is probably going to move pretty quick, so just try to follow along if you need it. I will try to put up torque specs where I have them. Most of it will probably just be on the screen and very little talking from here on out, which you might be thankful for. Next we'll reinstall the torque mount. Next we'll install the axle shaft and make sure the end of it is clean, free of dirt. And also, especially if you put new seals in it, make sure there's a little bit of gear oil where the seal goes so that the seal doesn't run dry. Next we'll work on getting all the stuff assembled here and I would recommend putting some grease on your splines here and also on the little dinger there on the ball joint. You'll thank yourself later if you ever have to take this apart again. And I'm just getting that started for now. And keep in mind, this bolt here only goes in one way. If you try to run it through the opposite way, you're just going to waste your time. Twenty one foot pounds. Two hundred and thirty three foot pounds depending on the year. I'll put a picture up right here of what the book says.
Then don't forget to tighten these up on both sides. So as you can see, I've got pretty much everything done up top here. I believe that is everything except for the negative battery terminal. I'll hook that up later. Now we'll come back under the car and there's a few things we don't want to forget down here. One of which being our uh, tow hook that goes here and also your uh, shift linkage and stuff. Don't put the cover on this yet because we still need to fill our transmission up with fluid. We'll get to that in just a second. Now to fill this transmission, you need to take this plug out right here. You're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen wrench. Oh, holy f All right. Now the proper lubricant for this transmission is Ford's full synthetic manual transmission fluid or manual transaxle fluid. However, if you want to go that route, you may want to take a bottle of your own lubricant out of the bedroom with you because they're going to f*** you with that stuff. I think it's like $40 a quart, and you're going to need to buy three because this transmission takes 2.1 quarts. Or what you can do is go to your parts store and get yourself some 7590 full synthetic, which itself is not exactly cheap. This stuff, this is just the O'Reilly House brand, and it was, uh, I think, 17 bucks a quart, but still way cheaper than the alternative. And filling it isn't exactly fun either, unless you can get a hose to route down in there, which I wouldn't recommend because you're probably going to make a freaking mess. You're going to want to get one of these. It's just a little bottle pump. This threads onto the bottle, and then you just pump it in. And what we're going to do is fill this up until we have just a little bit of fluid running out. And in this situation here, the car is jacked up, so we are actually going to end up overfilling it just a little bit, but I promise it'll be fine. I have never heard of a manual transmission having a problem if you're just a little bit overfilled. In fact, some transmissions I've heard actually benefit from it, like the ZF6 in my truck. Apparently it lowers gear rollover noise, but that's a whole other topic. So we'll just stick our hose in the hole. Giggity. And make sure you have a drain pan or something handy. I probably shouldn't have to tell you that, but I am anyway. And then start pumping. Many unbearable hours later. And if you're not a professional fisherman, in other words, a very experienced master of baiting, your wrist and hand is probably going to be killing you by the time you're done with this. There we go. We got fluid running out. Give her one more for good measure. Yep. All right. And clean your plug off and thread it back in and then just snug her up. And then you'll probably want to clean this up a little bit so you don't fool yourself into thinking you have a leak later. Now we can get our cover snapped back on. Now I need to check over everything because I think we might be done, besides putting our wheels on, obviously. So I've checked everything over and it appears I didn't forget anything. Make sure you remember to plug this thing back in or hook it back up for the uh, crankcase vent. And also make sure you plug in your mass airflow sensor. I have a habit of forgetting that and on more than one occasion I've spent hours trying to diagnose a problem that was solved by me just plugging that in because I'm an idiot. 
So now we'll just get our tires and wheels put back on. Now, from everything I've ever heard, when you have a new clutch, the proper break-in procedure is to do it nice and easy for like the first 500 miles or so. You don't want to go full throttle or, or whatever, anything like that. You want to you wanna be nice to it. I don't know how true that is. It doesn't really make sense to me because I know brakes, when you're breaking those in, you actually kind of want to run the crap out of them. You want to get them hot. Maybe it just clutches are made of something different. I don't know. But whatever, you're supposed to take it easy for the first 500 miles or so. Now I can tell you with this car, that's probably not going to happen. Um, this is my 16-year-old daughter's car, and she drives it like she thinks she's driving a Hellcat or, you know, a Mustang GT, which is better. Slower, but better. It's not a Dodge or a Fiat, whatever the hell they call themselves these days. So this clutch is going to have the absolute crap beat out of it, I'm sure, which is why we had to replace it anyway. And I'm, I'm not just being hard on her because, uh, where is it? Right there. Um, that's from a curb. There's a brand new control arm right there from the same curb. And you may have noticed that wheel bearing and hub looked pretty new. Same deal. So anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, you, you should be nice to this clutch for a while, but um, it, it might not really make a difference. We're not done yet, though. There is one more very important step that we need to take before we pull this thing out of the shop. celebration beer if this video helped you you can help it help other people by hitting the like button that lets the youtube algorithm know that this video should be shown to more people and also you can hit the subscribe button that lets me know personally that you like the content that i'm creating and that it's helpful and useful and that i'm not just wasting my time making these videos because these videos do actually take quite a bit of time to get edited down properly and, and usually when I'm recording it, it makes the job take about twice as long trying to set up camera angles and stuff so I would appreciate that as well or don't I mean it, it's not really that big of a deal it's not the end of the world if you don't subscribe but if you do you'll get notifications whenever I post new stuff but uh, yeah that's all thanks for watching and I hope this video helps you And no, I'm not drinking and driving. I'm still sitting in the shop.